So, I've spent a fair amount of time thinking and almost as much time talking about these so-called parasocial relationships that people develop. And I've said many times how I don't really develop them, but at the same time, I wish I could meet some of these people. But it's <laughs> a little bit different for me because I'm kind of full of myself and I think that, you know, I know better than them and, you know, I wish I could just, you know, tell them, you know, a piece of, you know, like, <laughs> well, you know, maybe that statement does have the right connotation, you know, a, a little piece of my mind to add to the discourse and be like, oh, if only you knew my idea, you would, you know, <clears throat> be articulating so much, something so much better. Um, but it's kind of struck me the extent to which I expected parasocial relationships to become less of a thing as the sort of barrier to entry for just creating online content has gone down more and more and more over the years. But for whatever reason, it's been the opposite, right? People are more and more obsessed with their favorite content creators, and rather than being fascinated by the content, they're just fascinated by the people making it, which I'm glad people are interested in their fellow human beings, that's wonderful. But, you know, <laughs> I just, I have a lot of online friends, and I don't regard that as unhealthy, because it's a, it's a two-way street, right? We hang out in chat rooms, and um, until recently, Reddit had that Reddit chat feature, right, or the Reddit, like, live talks feature, right? And I met a bunch of cool people on there that were part of the R San Diego subreddit, and now we have a Discord, and we all hang out there, and I think that's pretty pretty nice. And I have, you know, a small number of people that I sort of talk to in the comments section of my videos, and I don't regard that as terribly unhealthy either, because, I mean, again, I don't think we're putting each other on any sort of pedestal, and I feel like it's reasonably symmetric. But for whatever reason... People are obsessed with influencers, right? And it seems to be, like, the exact opposite of, like, separate art from the artist. It's like, you know, normally we think of that in the context of people enjoying art despite disliking the creator, but I, have again, see sort of a lot of the opposite problem almost, where people are so obsessed with content creators that even if their content you know becomes not that good they'll still be obsessed with it because it was created by the person that they're you know standing for and i don't know conversely you know just because you know somebody makes one piece of bad content doesn't mean that they've you know lost their spark of uh creativity or whatever it just means you know I don't, it's, it's very rare that, you know, any type of, you know, artist, intellectual, anything, that everything they put out is amazing, right? And people have, you know, and in fact, it's, a, it's if everything they do is of top-notch quality, it's almost a sign that they're not experimenting enough. But I noticed this in particular with regards to these bread tubers that I sometimes talk about, which I, I, I generally, you know, I've said before, I generally like their content, but some people are just <laughs> ridiculously obsessed with them and are convinced that they can do no wrong. And I don't think that the, the content creators themselves think that, nor do I think the majority of their audience is like that, but, uh, you know, internet hive minds can be kind of ludicrous sometimes, you know? And, I don't know. It, 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 I think it actually is helpful to remember that these people are human. And to remember that we do have sort of asymmetric relationships with people with large amounts of notoriety. And 
well, to A, focus on the people that we do have real symmetric relationships with, you know, our friends and family, whether those people are, you know, in the f same physical location or not, but people that we communicate back and forth with and have uh, actual social relationships with um, is thing number one. And then thing number two is to remember that these people are humans that don't necessarily know us directly. Um, and I don't know, it's like, I sometimes feel like, you know, stan culture results in the worst of both worlds, right? Where people are obsessed with their favorite creators, but also don't seem to see the normal human aspects of them, right? They're convinced that they're larger than life. Um, and, and one of the, actually, one of the reasons that I really don't feel that way about these people is that I, I, I realize, I, I often forget about it, but I actually technically was slash sort of am uh, friends with, although not very close friends with the, you know, uh, content creator, which is uh, Diana Cowern slash physics girl, who again is, uh, as of recording this, is uh, quite ill with long COVID. So uh, my thoughts and prayers to her. I hope she gets well soon. Uh, although my sister, when she was in like middle school, also had like, well, not COVID, but also had like chronic fatigue syndrome and uh, it, it lasted months and months and even like over a year. Um, and it, it, it you know, it, it just took time, you know, it just took a long time for it to get better. Um, so I don't mean to be pessimistic, but my prognosis for Diana is that she'll get better, but it's going to take a while. And there's probably not a whole lot that can be done uh, to accelerate the process. Not that there's nothing worth trying, but uh, probably just going to take quite a while. Um, so all I really, I mean, well, I don't see her regular, I haven't seen her regularly since like several years ago in grad school. Um, which the, the reason I knew her is that she used to be the, uh, bef before she did full-time YouTube, she was the outreach director for the uh, UCSD physics department while I was a graduate student there. And so we would have like different events where we would uh, host like high school students and stuff to, you know, teach them little physics demonstrations and labs on the weekends. And uh, she would uh, be involved in running that program. So I would see her there. Uh, and then also there was a, a house that had a bunch of physics grad students living in it that would have parties hosted there. And um, there was there were some good parties there. And, uh, you know, uh, she was often often there. Um, she and I were not super close friends, um, but we were part of the same sort of social circle. Although I, I actually don't think she she remembers current me because around the time her YouTube channel took off was also around the time that I started transitioning. Uh, so she she. she mostly knew me like pre-transition and then she kind of like had this influx of people in her life uh, as a result of sort of you know her rise on YouTube and then simultaneously my appearance changed drastically so she like didn't remember me <laughs> uh, uh, when I like would run into her at the uh, the house in Pacific Beach where all those parties were uh, which was kind of funny but anyways so she she's a perfectly ordinary person and I, I don't mean that in a you know a, a good way you know she's there's there's nothing um uh, you know, she's she's a perfectly nice person. Um, there's nothing extraordinary about her. She's, you know, successful because she puts time and energy into her content, not because there's anything larger than life about her. And uh, I actually don't watch her videos that often, <laughs> um, which the reason for that is for the same reason that I don't that I don't really watch Minute Physics or PBS Space Time, but I do watch Minute Earth and PBS Aeons, right? Which is that I tend to want, I tend to gravitate towards, uh, pun intended, towards content that I don't already have uh, knowledge in, uh, right? I have a PhD in physics, so um, I don't, you know, I sometimes will feel like watching, you know, some random physics content on YouTube, uh, but usually it's uh, stuff that is sort of I, either outside of my expert area of expertise or is more content for experts in my area of expertise. Um, and so um, her content is more for uh, a m more general audience to understand physics, which is wonderful. I, I, I think it's fantastic that, that content like that exists, but of course it doesn't really uh, speak to me. Um, but so, you know, she she's just a she's just a regular person, <laughs> you know. Um, 
and and whenever I like imagine these content creators and like interacting with them, I'm just like, you know, I remember interacting with Diana. It's just like, oh yeah, yeah. And it's like, she's a, uh, you know, she has a, you know, undergraduate degree in physics from MIT. It's you know, she's reasonably smart, uh, but like you know, and, and I mean, this is a physics ego thing, but like it's, I didn't feel like you know, uh, you know. <laughs> every physicist thinks they're 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 quite not every most physicists tend to think they're they're quite brilliant and I'm you know no exception although I try to not become too full of myself and you know doesn't ever you know I never felt like you know um, she was some uh, some titan that uh, you know or anything um, I also didn't feel like I was you know super smarter than her well I mean in the back of my mind. I, think I'm smarter than every other physicist because most physicists do but you know um, but so when I think about these like you know people in other subject matter domains you know I you know think of like you know <laughs> in the context of like you know translating Diana's way of articulating physics to their way of articulating like you know philosophy or sociology concepts or something like that and you know comparing that to like um people that maybe do research in those areas, because Diana is not a full-time researcher, which, again, doesn't mean she doesn't understand physics. It just means that, um, you know, every physicist gets the same basic education um, to understand, you know, you, you t we, we all take the classes that an engineer or whatever has to take, and then we take more classes to understand physics in detail. Uh, and then if we get you get a PhD, then you focus your time on doing research. Um, so she doesn't have experience uh, doing research, um, but she does have you know, the full understanding of somebody with an undergraduate degree in physics. And so, again, you know, br you know, somebody, exp or, you know, same thing with, like, you know, a PBS Aeons video, right, with somebody explaining something about uh, how, you know, some particular organism evolved. I'll just be like, oh, yeah, that's pretty neat. That gives me a, you know, cursory understanding of that, and they probably understand it reasonably well, but they probably, if it's a brand new research paper that just came out, they probably have the, they have a sufficient understanding to explain accurately what, what that result was. Like, oh, they found this fossil, and this is how they think it fits into this evolutionary scheme, you know? Um, but, of course, it's different than the people that are actually doing the research, and all of those people are just people, right? None of them is, like, you know, God or anything, right? They're all just doing their best. And so, I don't know. It's, it's trying to come to some sort of a succinct point here um although oh i'm at i'm at uh, i'm at around 13 minutes so i'm gonna have to go for at least another minute and a half because i don't want to end on uh 13 minute ish mark because that would be uh that would be unlucky and i uh i try not to be superstitious but uh sometimes i am and uh you know what's the harm in one more minute and it'll help me maybe come to a more succinct conclusion <laughs> Because the last time I can remember talking about this at length, I was talking about how, like, notoriety could potentially help me, you know, become a fighter pilot or something. And I've subsequently realized that it it probably won't because there's another YouTuber, um, C.W. Le Lemoyne, who is a fighter pilot, and he at one point uh, tried to get a... He was, you know, he was in the reserve and his squadron got stood, stood down and he was trying to transfer to another squadron and his YouTube channel actually proved an impediment to that. So that has also made me go, you know, maybe maybe uh, being an influencer ain't all it crack, it's cracked up to be, but also important to remember that uh, all these people are human and uh, deserve compassion and empathy, but uh, also should not be put up on pedestals, <laughs> you know. And I think... Um, those are actually complementary ideas because when you remember that those people are human and don't expect, you know, the world of them, you also give them more room to be human. And being more critical of their ideas, I think, leads to being more empathetic to them as people. And I think that it's better to have intellectual relationships combined with some empathy when it comes to influencers than it and content I don't I don't, I don't like watching actual lifestyle influencers or whatever than it comes to when it comes to content creators uh, than it is to like you know put them on some ludicrous pedestal so 
Anyways, those are my thoughts. Uh, yeah. Bye.